Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Paul and welcome back to Common Touch of Fantasy. Today I am going to show off some comic art and kind of talk about the comics as well. Uh, short reviews, but the focus is going to be on some of my favorite panels within these comics. So starting off, we have a graphic novel. This is Volume 2 of Giant Days. This is a fun, quirky series about three uh, young adults that just started college and they're trying to figure out how to go to college and also uh, relationships and just being an adult. And my favorite scene from this graphic novel is this scene here. They come back from Christmas vacation. They find out that a bunch of people have been staying in their rooms as like a and b air type thing. And uh, they're kind of upset about that. And then uh, at the end here, we find out that they're studying for exams that are going to be coming up. And we find out that Esther uh, doesn't really go to class much and doesn't study that much. And she's kind of having an anxiety attack about it. Uh, this is a great volume. Uh, Esther, uh, Susan, and Daisy, I think they're all, all their names are. It's great. If you like um, lighthearted, uh, female-centered, college-age type stuff, check out Giant Days. I really like it a lot. Uh, East of West. I read this last night. I haven't uh, written a review on this yet. This is by Jonathan Hickman. And my favorite panel on this is actually a, a very important panel. Uh, first off, the art in this is ridiculous. It is so good. But this panel right here, or this page right here, is extremely important because this is showing something that happened in the past that the entire book alludes to. And I had to flip back to this page quite a bit so that I can see which characters are on the page in this picture up top and down here. This is a science fiction meets dystopia western. And America is all split up. Uh, there's the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And death is not a part of them. He kind of went off by himself. So the other three are looking for death to try to get him back in the uh, group but death is going out killing a bunch of people trying to find something uh, I don't want to spoil anything because this book is pretty deep and I'm looking forward to volume 2 the only thing about this uh, volume 1 is it kind of uses the different plots um, conveniently when it wants to talk about the plot the world building uh, the writer does that. I personally like that type of storytelling, but for some people that want answers right away, uh, they probably won't like it as much. Uh, that's, so that's East of West by um, Jonathan Hickman, and uh, it was pretty good. I gave that one a three. Okay, this is issue five of Civil War two, and now we have everybody fighting. Um, finally <laughs> and what I like about these two pages is that uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy individuals get involved in the fight and they're fighting against uh, Iron Man and they're fighting with uh, Captain Marvel and what I liked about this is I never really read uh, anything with Guardians of the Galaxy characters in it and I liked having them in a comic and it was just a very interesting scene because right after this scene something really interesting happens and everything kind of changes um, highly enjoyed this I gave this a three as well uh, the Civil War 2 storyline isn't amazing but it's been it's been fun uh, this is issue 7 of Green Arrow and what I like about this is we get this touching moment between Oliver and uh, Emiki, Emiko, and uh, that is his half sister, and that's in the past, and and she's apologizing to Oliver. And then we have in the future, where 
um, the daughter is saving the mother and then the mother is apologizing to the daughter so it's a very interesting page where we have something that happened in the past and then it's something that happened in the present and uh, it was a, a pretty good issue and I give that three as well I, I believe um, Superman this is kind of like a one-off Superman story um, this is issue number seven and basically the uh, the Kents go to the fair and while they're at the fair uh, Clark says that he will definitely not do anything Superman-ish but of course he ends up doing it and this is the last page when uh, Lois his wife finds out that he did something Superman-ish while they're on the roller coaster and she's upset but John the boy and then Clark are just having a lot of fun on the roller coaster but she's like I knew it I knew you couldn't do it and this was just a very fun issue that I enjoyed um, Seven to Eternity this is a fantasy high imagining fantasy uh, comic that just started this is something from Image keep on the lookout for this this is going to be one of the most imaginative fantasy comics ever and this is the iconic spread page that uh, people have seen on the internet it's been posted everywhere and uh, this guy is visiting this area where this like kind of like a demon lord is over everybody and he is the ruler of everything and this guy has run away and he's trying to come back and talk to people to broker a deal with uh, the bad guy so that they won't all die and it's really cool it's a very imaginative comic that I really liked and I gave this start of this one a four the art is just amazing and that's by Rick Remander and Jerome Opena uh, the hunt this is number three issue three creepy uh, amazing art I just love this so far I've given every issue a four and it's just so solidly done I love it with this spread here we have uh, our main character coming out of like this witching woods where there was like spirits and stuff and this crows there to meet her and I thought it was just a really cool picture uh, we have the spread of the main picture, but then we have the storyline uh, with the crow coming out and she getting upset with it and throwing a stick at it and being kind of upset about everything. Um, just a really good comic. If you like Irish dark fantasy, Irish like folk, folk tales, uh, horror elements, check this out. The Hunt. It's by Colin Lorimer. Action Comics, my favorite scene was in the back here. So what's really cool about this is that Clark Kent is writing a uh, kind of like a blog post or a newspaper post for the Daily Planet. And he's talking about what's going on with Superman and himself. And while that's happening, the story is being told about what's happening with the other people in the story in the pictures. And so... It's, it's a really cool the way they do this and this goes on for uh, plenty of pages and what's being said kind of relates to the picture and it just kind of shows what is going on around these other individuals while us the reader is reading basically his newspaper post and I thought that was a very ingenious way to show the narrative progressing but also giving us some uh, helpful background information from Clark. Uh, this is Captain America, Steve Rogers, number five. Uh, this fills in a ton of information for Civil War to the, the whole thing, basically. And really highly recommended this if you're reading S Civil War 2 and you want to know, like, kind of what happened with the whole Bruce Banner thing. And so this page here kind of shows what that was all about and uh, very cool uh, concept about how you know Steve Rogers Captain America is doing what he wants to do and influencing events in the Civil War Civil War world uh, this is Frostbite this is by Joshua Williamson this is brand new 
and uh, this is a post-apocalyptic type world where it is a new ice age and what's important about this world is that uh, people have to survive by buying heat and heat is just as important as food now and so people have to barter and there's crimes and stuff what I like about this is on this page over here we have uh, the dialogue and plot going on between our main character and some individuals that approaches her asking for help but in the pictures off to the side there is another uh, story going on of ruffians stealing um, these blankets from these really cold people and it's just a very interesting dual story uh, on one side and the other and I really like that it's a way for the, for the comic book creator to show a scene not just with the two people talking but what's what's going on in the world around them and I like this comic so far second ice age um, it was caused by scientists and now uh, this girl here is a, a person that goes out and uh, finds heat for people and she now has these this scientists in her uh, possession that she is taking to Alcatraz because this scientist might actually know a cure for frostbite which is this new disease that freezes people this is good this is from Vertigo uh, DC it's frostbite by Joshua Williamson and then the sender uh, issue t uh, 15 and this page blew me away this is beautiful like I almost started crying at this page uh, this is when Andy and Effie were young and they kissed for the first time and it is it's just a beautiful picture and I'm thinking about buying another uh, issue just to like rip this page out and another page that I don't want to spoil and like put them in a frame because it's just so beautiful the art in this issue number 15 was phenomenal uh, this is the best issue of the third arc of Descenders uh, and the third arc hasn't been that great but now that we have this amazing issue it really bumped up the uh, that third arc all right guys so I hope that you enjoyed this this has been uh, a lot of fun for me and uh, I really love comic books I love the art and I just love it more and more as I read it uh, I'm currently reading Revenger by Alistair Reynolds and I'm enjoying that it's very different than all of his other books and it has a very interesting world that is way different than anything I've read so I'm looking forward to reading that this week uh, thanks for watching please uh, comment like subscribe